so much for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Miria uh, Leva Gutierrez, and I am acting director of the Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance, uh, better known as NOMA. Um, and it gives us great pleasure tonight to kick off, as Michelle said, which is uh, the first in a series of virtual open studio tours with Uptown Artists. Um, as many uh, of you know, open studios with local artists have long been an important um, and immensely popular art stroll fixture. And although we can't physically invite you into these studios, uh, we can still bring these to you virtually. And that's what we're excited to do for you tonight. Um, before I introduce tonight's artist, I wanted um, to mention that this program is supported in part by public funds from the New York uh, City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council. Um, so we are grateful uh, to them. Um, and, but now we uh, are uh, moving on to the main event and uh, I'd like to introduce our wonderful artist. Um, Wilhelmina Grant is a native New Yorker, a Harlem resident and self-taught artist. She is the recipient of the Black Art Makers Award of the National Conference of Artists, the Women's History Month Creative Power of Women Award, presented by New York State Senator Bill Perkins, and the Elaine Locke Art and Action Award presented by the Harlem Arts Alliance. She was also one of NOMA's very own 2016 Uptown Art Stroll honorees, and her first book, a feeling of fullness, insights of a divinely guided journey beyond breast cancer was self-published in 2016. For the last 12 years, Wilhelmina has combined mixed media and found objects to create her collages and assemblages. Indeed, Wilhelmina believes in the transformative capability of art. Mining thrift shops, basements, dumpsters, flea markets, garage sales, and streets, her finds become her artworks. A two-time survivor of breast cancer, our artist tonight knows a thing or two about renewal. And so with that, it gives me great pleasure tonight to introduce the artist uh, Wilhelmina Grant. Hi, thank you so much, Michelle and Miria, Joanna and Martin, everybody over at NOMA, Northern Manhattan Arts Alliance, for doing this. This is just so awesome, and I am so honored to be the first. So thank you all. Also, shout out to the Department of Cultural Affairs and Coogan's, which is um, a neighborhood establishment that, that is sponsoring this event tonight. Um, I think it's so important for neighborhood establishments, artists, and organizations such as NOMA to all come together and make art happen in our community. So thank everybody. So, and thank all of you for participating tonight. I know it may have been a little challenge to get on Zoom, this electronic stuff, we're all falling into it and getting used to it, but I thank you for your effort and for getting through. So we'll talk to you in a few minutes. Okay, um, this is Joanna Castro uh, from NOMA. I, I also want to um, let folks know that there's a chat option in the lower part of your screen if you are doing a Zoom video. Um, so we will be projecting a video. So I, as, you have, as you're watching it, if you have any questions, feel free to type in your questions there. Um, as Wilhelmina mentioned, uh, this program or this first virtual open studios uh, is being sponsored by Coogan's and we have one of the owners uh, on live, Peter Walsh. Peter, would you like to say a few words before we get started with the second part of uh, the main part of the program? Sure. Can you hear me clearly? We can. Oh, well, first of all, hello to everybody. This is probably the last, <laughs> our, our, the last thing, cultural thing, uh, that Coogan's is doing in Washington Heights, at least as a, an official restaurant. And I just want to thank everybody. I mean, it's, it's the arts that's kept our neighborhood uh, alive. It's the arts that's led 
the neighborhood to create an atmosphere that business f has even followed through. And great artists like Wilhelmina, and I, I love what she does because she, she takes culture, but she doesn't get, she's not a culture stomper. She, she takes culture and creates art from it. She, she takes the culture and doesn't wallow in, in, in it. She takes it and brings it out for all of us and makes it universal. And well, I mean, I really appreciate that because that's also another kind of reflection of our wonderful neighborhood of Washington Heights uh, that, that you do. You let us look into you and by looking into you, you let us look into ourselves. Great to be here with everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Mr. Walsh. Thank you. Thank you the so much. The ever poet and singer. Always beautiful words from you, Peter. Thank you very much. All right. So, so um, if we could, thank you so much for being here um, uh, tonight. Um, Peter, we, we really appreciate that you've joined us. Um, and uh, I think I speak for all of us here when we say um, uh, Coogan's um, will not uh, soon be forgotten and it is uh, forever uh, in our hearts and, and part of our, of our neighborhood. So we're happy um, that you will be here with us tonight in this, um, as you said, it's maybe your, your final event um, with Coogan's, but certainly not um, as part of, of the community. So we are, we're so grateful for you to be here tonight. Um, so I guess, uh, Michelle, if we can sort of move to um, looking at, uh, we can uh, gain entry into a Wilhelmina studio. Um, we'll take a, a look at that. Ready to go? Let's do, let's play the tape. All right. Hi, I'm Wilhelmina. Grant. I'm a found object artist. I do primarily assemblages and collages. Um, I just started doing some work with encaustic wax, hot wax. I do a little photography and I just published my first book. I was born in Brooklyn, but I have been living in Harlem for the past 20 years and I own property in Harlem, so I think I qualify as a Harlemite. Um, transplanted. So um, yes, I'm from Harlem by way of Brooklyn. I started doing art projects about eight years ago after I lost my job. Um, as a part of filling some time, I had someone show me how to start making assemblages and it worked out very well that that medium is good for me because using found objects, I was just taking whatever I could find from around the house or uh, on the street, clean garbage, and turned it into something other than what it started out to be. Well, I'm inspired by the fact that there are so many items that are of a different type, let's say, uh, so many items like a hot comb, for instance, that we used at one time that are not really in popular use anymore. So I preserve these items, put them into art, and some people who know what it is can appreciate it. So things like um, things made of metal in particular that are no longer made, uh, that have been replaced by plastics or uh, other synthetics, I try to preserve some of those things from our culture and from our history and uh, making art with them is one way to ensure that they would never be destroyed. Well, some of the well-known artists such as um, Betty Starr is a big inspiration for me. Um, any and all of the assemblage artists are inspiration for me because of what they've done with throwaways um, and uh, disposable items and turn them into a political statement or turn them into something beautiful, uh, essentially uh, garbage, so to speak, and they've turned it around to tell a story with it. Um, Betty Sarr is one of the main ones that I can think of at the moment. 
Um, but a lot of the assemblage artists or folk artists uh, are an inspiration to me. Well, I try to learn something new and add on to what I've learned uh, because I'm teaching other people now. I teach, uh, I, I help guide senior uh, citizens through, in some instances, their first artistic process in decades. So I'm always teaching myself new techniques so that I can um, help them discover their creativity and um, artistry. So I'm always, always learning new techniques, going to workshops myself or reading up on other artists or visiting other artist studios, going to other art shows and mingling uh, with artists, rubbing elbows with them at art exhibitions or art uh, groups. And that helps me keep it fresh and helps me keep learning. So for me, um, I try to incorporate messages in some of my art that has to do with uh, spreading early detection uh, of uh, spreading awareness of early detection of breast cancer because I'm a two-time survivor um, with 22 years of survivorship under my belt and I think it's an important thing for people to understand and also to know that there is a large disparity in survival rates in the communities of color and underserved populations. So I've made quite a lot of art that brings out that point and that brings people's attention to uh, survivorship and early detection. My, my favorites change from moment to moment. Uh, when I finish a piece, that becomes my immediate favorite. But I've, I've had so many favorites and actually some of my most favorite pieces have been purchased by collectors. So mm -hmm. they're no longer here, but uh, my current favorite is this fish piece. And it was made by um, putting together uh, an old ice cube tray and the inside of a steam iron and uh, a spatula for the tail. And this was what I was mentioning to you before, some of the things that are no longer found um, in use because that's been replaced by plastic or, or ice cubes now come out of the door of the refrigerator. So um, some people younger than myself may not even know what that is. Yes, and I think that was one of my early pieces. I did that one in 2009, I believe. And uh, the, the 50 nipples represent the 50 states of the United States. Some of them are missing. As a matter of fact, exactly two of them are missing. They represent breasts. Um, and you see how I have a statement below that says, win the war on breast cancer. And there's a little boxing glove, uh, leave Iraq. And that was in the news quite a lot that year. And in between, uh, I use a lot of time pieces in my work. And, and there is a little uh, watch head that actually, I'm assuming they're real diamonds because on the back it's, it's numbered and it says Cartier. <laughs> and I didn't know what that was when I put it there and then I realized, I said, maybe that's a real diamond watch. But then that really drives home the point even more because I'm talking about um, how we really need a cure for breast cancer and so much money is being spent on militarism and war. And so it really probably belongs there, which I have a setup for encaustic and uh, I uh, enjoy, I have enjoyed starting to learn that it's a, it's a process and it involves a lot of patience and a lot of ventilation. So I don't do it that often, but I, I do enjoy working with wax. Well, they enjoy seeing what I've done. I don't exactly do the work on this level with them because it requires uh, a lot of um, heavy uh, tools, saws and, and um, drills and things like that. So I don't use that with them, but they have seen my work and they're interested in it. And I might do a, a basic type of assemblage with them such as this where they can easily attach with some very strong glue um, images onto blocks of wood for example and where they don't need to use a drill or a hammer or anything where they might um, sustain some kind of injury and not try to go there. I, I would like to be featured in a museum.
Mm. That's what I will. Actually, my work has been in a museum once, the African American Museum in Dallas, Texas. But I want my work to be featured or something, maybe a collection or maybe a part of a collection or something to be um, featured in a museum. And um, I wanted my work to appear in a book, so I wrote my own book. <laughs> and I have a lot of my, uh, 40 pieces of my art in my book that tells my story about how my breast cancer experience connects with my arts experience. So um, that's one milestone that I crossed this year and I, I'm happy to have been able to do that. Um, other than that, hmm, um, What's next, the movie? <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I don't, can you can you all hear me? I can't figure. Thank you so much, Wilmina, for sharing your studio. Um, with us. We would like very much um, to hear uh, and to open the floor now to questions uh, for Wilhelmina from our virtual audience. Um, I know that a lot of you have entered your questions into the chat, so I'll encourage you to do that sort of throughout. Um, and uh, I'd actually like to introduce now uh, our former NOMA executive director and current consultant producer of special projects for NOMA, uh, Joanna Castro, uh, who is here tonight and who will serve as our moderator. Um, Joanna. Thank you, Nidia, for that warm welcome. Good evening. Buenas noches, everyone. Um, this is a, a fun activity we're doing tonight. Uh, bear with us. Uh, as we mentioned, this is uh, the first time, yet I think we've figured out all the tech glitches and everyone seems to be on and listening and, and hearing and uh, I think we're good. So please um, continue to add your questions to the chat. Uh, the first one we have is from Liz yeah. Ritter, who happens to be the chair of the Parks and Culture um, committee of, of Community Board 12. So a shout out to Liz with a fabulous background. Um, so her question is, do you find, Wilhelmina, that your art is more inspired by the objects you find or that your searches for objects are inspired by having a particular piece in mind? It happens both ways. Um, sometimes I might have in mind uh, to create one particular thing and it turns into something totally different. Um, I collect found objects and I hold on to them until such time as when I'm making something, I might think, oh, I need something that's triangular or I need something that looks like a head or I need something that looks like um, some arms or legs. So, um, Things just develop organically. Um, I might just go in my pile of things and start putting things together and rearrange and it starts becoming something and I had no idea what it was going to do. And I just keep fooling around until I get something. But I don't really usually start out uh, with an idea um, unless I've made something similar and I'm doing a series. So if I do a series of hot comb pieces, then I'm on the prowl for hot combs uh, mm -hmm. wherever I can come up with one. Um, or uh, somebody mentioned the fish piece that was on the wall. Um, if I'm doing something relating to the ocean and I'm looking to create a series of fish, then I'll look for things that have the shape that look to me like a fish. Okay. Fascinating. Next question, a little bit more serious. Can you um, walk us through your breast cancer journey? Um, we know that 20 plus years ago, women would die at he heavy high rates. Um, that's gone down, yet uh, Latinas and African American women continue to get cancer and, and not necessarily always diagnosed. Um, so where does your activism also come in, um, in this very personal journey? Okay, well, the short answer is, it's but I'll tell you, um, 
what I did with my to start spreading awareness about early detection was to have a special event surrounding art and art ex exhibitions to get people through the door. Because if you say I'm having a health fair and I'm having something to teach you about breast cancer, nobody's coming. So what I did when I started my small organization was I uh, used the art to have um, art activities for people to join in and for them to come up with something where they could spread the word and then invite all their friends and neighbors and family members and we'd have a great big celebration and at the same time they'd be fed the information. Um, my journey started 26 years ago and um, 26 years and counting. What has happened though in the interim is that uh, other groups and individuals and corporations have caught on to the idea of adding art to spread awareness about a cause. So, so many more people out there are doing it. So I don't have to do it as much focus on that because people with more resources doing that work now. So my work has sort of shifted toward um, uh, having the senior um, aging participants be introduced to art and at the same time they get some information about um take care of better kids and and their families okay we have a couple of pieces here um that michelle started showing um can you tell us um and maybe answer question one um a little bit more inspirations uh, when do you consider a piece done? Um, how do you name pieces? Anything you'd like to describe about um, these pieces that we're looking at right now? Um, well, that piece there, that's a smashed can. Um, to, her name is, I used to be a, a can of spray. <laughs> and it was a smashed spray can that I found in Florida. and. I walked past it and then I backtracked and picked it up because it looked like a dress to me and it looked, it had movement and it looked like a woman's dress. So I held on to it for about three years. And um, one day in the studio, it found its way into an art piece and someone collected it. So I don't have her anymore. Very nice. Um, another question, um, how did the video, can you tell us, um, uh, give us some background on how the video came about and what, what it felt like having someone visit your studio and see the pieces on the wall, see the, the, um, the pieces that might become a piece of art? Oh, well, I just love it when people come to the studio because they don't realize that it's a different kind of art studio. It's full of found objects and boxes and bins and things hanging all over the place and lots of quote unquote junk because that's what I work in. That's my medium. And it is a bit overwhelming when people come. Um, I always participate in Noma's open studios um, in the summer. And I usually have a pre-holiday open studio in December. And people come and they see the art and people who have been there before say, oh, I never saw that. I said, it's been here. You just didn't take it all in. There's just so much to see. So um, I love it when people come to visit. I love it even more when they do uh, an artwork or participate in something. So what I do when we have open studios, I have a 10 minute activity for people who want to participate to do. And um, that's been very successful. I believe we're seeing images right now of uh, artwork that you've done with seniors. Yes, so that one you're looking at right now, that is um, something that takes zero skill. Um, I'm not a drawing artist, but what that is, is I have one here. You just take a, um, a CD case, which is hard plastic, and then you take your cell phone and you take a picture of yourself and trace the image and it always comes out right. It always comes out looking like the person. So that's obviously Maria and she that tracing an image from her cell phone. So I think what, what I like to do is not make art intimidating. And when people say, oh, I can't draw and I say, well, I can't draw either. And I, I actually cannot. So um, 
that's a way for them to get, oh, these are some of my, my participants, but that's a way for them to get a project completed and feel good about it and walk home with something that's, that they made with their own hands. I'm talking about making uh, with your own hands. Uh, you make jewelry, is that right? I do a little bit of everything, um, like things like this, and I'm actually home testing it to see if I did it right. So if it falls apart, I know I didn't do a good job. But part of uh, my teaching someone else is to learn it myself first and test it out and see how it goes. So, but we do a little bit of everything. I try to work in all mediums that, that I have, um, fi fiber, jewelry, uh, metal, paper, paint, clay, just every medium possible. Okay. And most of those things I can find. Like, oh, I want to show you something. I made this today. It's a milk. So you can always make something. It's a planter. You can always make something out of what you have around the house. For sure. I don't know if I could do that, but um, I like looking at it uh, well, and hearing about it. I'll show you next time. Okay, sounds good. Just a um, magic marker and a milk carton. You just draw lines and make a face. Okay, I don't know if it'd be as nice as yours. Um, can you walk us through what a treasure search looks like? Where do you go? Um, how do you decide? Like this, I want to keep this. Do you have? How, do you separate the different pieces by sizes, by textures, by colors? What What's your system? Can you share a bit of, of that process of, of collecting potential mm -hmm. artwork? Well, I I try to have a system. I've got collections of metals and woods and substrates over here, and plastic things over there, wooden things over there. That doesn't last very long because when I start looking for things, I start pulling things out all willy nilly and uh, until I find what I want. And by the time I'm finished doing that and get into the actual art making of it, it's time to just push everything back in the, the room and close the door. So it, I don't I don't have really a system for 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 organizing because it doesn't work with this particular um, uh, medium. It may work for some people, but I don't think that way. And my, my creativity doesn't work that way. Um, so it's, I work very messy and then I clean it up. Okay. I don't know if I answered your question, but uh, what was... Well, in, in terms of where, where do you go to find uh, potential elements uh, okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, for instance, um, that one piece that you saw in the video that had the baby bottle nipples on it, um, I needed to find 50 baby bottle nipples cheaply. So I went to one of the thrift shops and I found a bunch of them and I, they were maybe um, six for a dollar or eight for a dollar, something mm -hmm. like that. They were very inexpensive. And um, I found enough of them. And the cashier said, well, do you work in a nursery? And I said, no, um, it's OK. <laughs> and she said, you can't return these. I said, no, 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 it's fine. So if I need a sp specific thing, um, I'll try the cheapest place I can find it. But most of the objects I find, um, I just pick them up. And when I'm looking through my piles of objects, they just sort of organically become something. I don't really usually set out to make a specific thing, but if I see something that I think I can use later, I'll get it. I'll acquire it. And then people bring me all kinds of stuff. Oh my really? gosh. People, people know that I um, work in found objects and they say, oh, I've got a box of junk in my basement. I'm going to bring it to you. <laughs> so, <laughs> Okay. I, I acquire a lot, a lot of things that way. And sometimes I do work it into a, a piece. So it, it works out well. Oh, and also I have to shout out the um, Materials for the Arts. That's another organization run by the Department of Cultural Affairs. I am one of their um, members. And from time to time, I'll go to the warehouse and um, get some materials to work with my uh, senior groups and, and myself. So that's another big resource uh, for me 
and that that's really like Disneyland of found objects up there. Yeah, I, I hear it's paradise for artists. Mm -hmm. um, how, where, where are you getting inspiration with, with the current reality we're living? What, what have you created in, in the last few weeks? Well, I've been working on uh, a garden um, I've been growing vegetables, planting seeds and growing vegetables. And um, it's been an experiment because I've never grown anything before. And since I had the time, I decided why not do it. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with um, um, scrapping. Uh, that means when you take scraps from your kitchen vegetables that you've finished with, and instead of throwing them away, you root them and then grow them. And uh, here's my, my bok choy. So this is rooting right now. And in a few more days or weeks, it'll have little white roots on it. And then I can put it in some soil and it will become another bok choy. And um, see, I was ready for you. I. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm reading these questions from the chat, so you... I, I did the same thing with uh, with lettuce. These are three oh, lettuce yeah. um, lettuce uh, stumps that I put in water, and I let them uh, root, and then I put them in some dirt. So I, I think to your question, um, that's how I've been being creative over the past few weeks. And for another reason, uh, that's a found object for me because it was a, a cast away throw away and I'm reusing it. But even more importantly, if you can remember in the past few years, they talked about um, the romaine lettuce being contaminated with E. coli mm -hmm. or listeria or something. So if you want to grow your own uh, lettuce in your kitchen, you know it's not contaminated and you know it's safe to eat. So those, when they get a lot bigger, you can cut them off leaf by leaf and have a nice salad and you know it's, it's clean and it's safe. And anybody can do it. All you need is a windowsill, a glass of water and a windowsill. Okay, well, you're a true Renaissance woman. Um, <laughs> really pretty amazing. Um, another question, in going back to the, the video, um, you mentioned towards the end of it that you, you would love to have a piece in a museum. And you actually did. Can you, can you tell us some, uh, more about that? Yes, I, um, I participated in an, in an exhibit for surrounding breast cancer awareness um, for the African American Museum in Dallas, Texas. And um, I didn't stop to do that, but I had uh, created a, an exhibit of 13 famous black women who died of breast cancer. And I circulated it all throughout Harlem. And um, I partnered with someone that I know who's also in the breast cancer awareness and survivorship movement. And she invited me to her hometown to exhibit this work. So it, it went on view um, either three or four times. And um, I, that particular exhibition, I was focusing on finding images uh, of those women from the internet and then embellishing them with uh, different found objects and it became uh, a thing. And um, it will be shown in upstate New York uh, shortly. It, it was on its way in March, but then that got canceled because of the situation right now. But, um, but that was my first um, exhibit that was a, a national museum. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, we have Sherry Masochi from the Manhattan Times uh, here tonight, and she asks, how do you think cancer has impacted your art? Hi, Sherry. I know Sherry took my picture a few times for the, for the uh, Manhattan Times. Um, well, I had done a piece uh, one time for a, an exhibition that focused on um, uh, maternal mortality um, to talk about how the, um, the medical establishment 
allows so many people to die during childbirth, so many women to die during childbirth. And the piece ended up being more about survivorship because this is where the, the audience comes in and this is where the viewer um, that sees the art comes in. Um, it was created one way, but the person, one person who saw it uh, read it a different way and interpreted the piece. And you had it on the screen earlier. Um, it's the black piece with the clock face and the, the belly um, and the one breast, no, uh, not that one. Um, but anyway, um, it was intended for one thing and the person who interpreted it said, oh yes, that's it, that's it. She said, oh, is that you? No, not that one, not that one. It's the one with the big belly. Mm, that's another breast cancer piece, but that's not the one I'm talking about. But she, it was just before, the, right, that's what, that one. Um, I used a chip and dip bowl for the belly to make it look pregnant. There's a skull and crossbones for the navel. And you know, the, the, the relationship between the navel and, and, and um, it's got a skull and crossbones, which represents death. And it's right there on the navel. And she's turned to the side with the one breast. And the person who interpreted it thought it was me and that I was trying to say that, that I was not pregnant or never pregnant because I, my eggs were poisoned and through the breast cancer experience, the chemo and such. And she said, yeah, that's you. Because, and I said, wow, I, I never thought of that. But that is one way that that piece could be interpreted. And she said, oh yeah, and the time got away from you. You were 37 when you were diagnosed and you really wanted to give birth, but it never happened. And so it was like, wow. So it's, it's just really interesting how um, pieces that were not intended to represent one thing, I mean, that's just how, how art works. And for me, it's a very spiritual experience to create the art because I don't set out necessarily to make a specific thing, but Actually, that was, but it, it turned out to be something else <laughs> based on the viewer's interpretation. As I say, art is subjective. Um, talking about pieces, what is your favorite piece? Either your favorite piece or your most challenging piece, or both? Well, my most challenging piece is the one that's in the women's exhibition right now up at the Rio Gallery. Mm. Um, it's the one with all the colors. It's the woman with a skirt and uh, she's got a crown on with nine colors and a skirt with nine colors. Um, and uh, her name is Oya, Mother of Transformation. And that piece, that one, yes, that piece took me three years to make. And I had an idea for it early on, but I couldn't find the exact pieces, the exact uh, components to put it together. And it sat in my studio partially done for three years until I could find everything that I, that I needed and that I was happy with. I kept changing her face and I kept putting different objects for the head. I wasn't happy with it. Then I was trying to find uh, something to represent her skirt, to show movement, and it, it really, <laughs> it took me three years to be happy with it. And of course, I worked on numerous pieces at the same time. So uh, she took a back seat for three years and waited patiently until I could complete her. <laughs> and she is one of my favorites. She really is. What do you, what would you say she embodies or represents uh, today with what we're living? Do you think well, the meaning of it has changed from when you first created the no, piece? Abs no, it's, it's absolutely the right piece for, for this time. And I mentioned that to uh, Andrea when she selected the piece before any of this happened. Um, she selected the piece to put in the exhibition, the women's exhibition. And her name is uh, the Mother of Transformation, which is what we're going through right now, a huge trans transformation. Um, and, you know, she's got a sword and she's just cutting through uh, lots of things. And it could be good, thought of in a good way or a bad way. She's cutting the bad things out so the good things can come in. I like to think of it that way. And um, it's, it, it just, 
happen to be the right piece for right now. Um, yeah. Wow. Are there any other pieces you'd like to talk about that we have images of? Um, I like that one. I can't get Tell it. Tell right us now, about it. That's okay. Tell us about that piece. Well, I found a, a collection of br uh, brushes, um, brooms, and I made quite a few uh, pieces that use the brooms. I, I, th I think I like to put a little um, interesting twist in, in things. I like to do a lot of masks. There you go, masks and faces in my work. And uh, I came off came up with these brooms thinking, hmm, that would be a good um, representation of hair. And I, I have an exhibit right now that's ongoing at a hair salon. So as people purchase those pieces, I replace them with new pieces. So I said, okay, what other kind of hairdos can I give these, <laughs> these pieces? So I thought it was comical to give, to use the brushes as hair. So yeah, so that's one of my favorites. And what I do sometimes is I enjoy the piece before I put it out there into the world because sometimes when I take a piece to an exhibit, it doesn't come home. <laughs> um, I see you. Collect my work. I love for my work to be out in, in the world. What, what? Why is it meaningful? Why is it special when when you have a red dot that your piece has sold? I like for other people to be able to enjoy my work as much as I do. And it, it, it's when I first started making art, I had no intention of selling it. I don't make art to sell. I make it because I enjoy it and I make it to express myself. And I, if I have a particular thing I'm working through, um, it usually comes out in the art. Um, and it, it's healing. For me, art is a very healing uh, experience. And um, I love it when people um, love it too, and they want to take it home with them. Um, I had a, a, a purchase that happened around Christmas time last year, and a woman called me to say she loved this piece that was gifted to her. And um, well, I can't tell you who gave it to me, but I, I love it. I love. It. I said, okay, I'm glad you love it, and I'm glad they loved it enough to purchase it. For me. But it was uh, former President Bill Clinton who bought the piece. Wow. Yeah, so he's one Pretty of my nice. collectors now. Pretty nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, so I think we're coming to an end. There are a couple more questions. Um, so we'll continue offline and we'll be sure to tag folks. Um, I know one of the questions is from Lilia, fellow uh, women artist who's part of the Women's Show. Hi, Lilia. And she asked about um your upcoming museum show where upstate is it and if any dates you can give um so we'll be um you yeah i don't know yet it'll be in peak skill but uh, the dates oh, wow. have been put it'll be pushed back because you know you know why okay. <laughs> um and one last comment we also have here daria co-chair of the arts and culture Commit, uh, uh, culture Committee of Community Board 9, our neighbors and friends. Um, and she writes, Wilhelmina, kudos on your amazing art. I had previously only seen your work on paper and thank you for creating a platform, drawing attention to breast cancer from one survivor mm -hmm. to another. Oh, thank you for saying that. Thank you. Thanks so much. So I think it, this, is, uh, this is what we do. We connect. Uh, we share. Uh, thank you, everyone, for all of your great questions. Um, if I missed any, my apologies. Uh, we'll be sure to continue and um, have them on social media. Uh, yeah. Before you go, I want to gently remind you that um, these events are not free. Um, we have to thank uh, one of our main sponsors, the Department of Cultural Affairs. Um, so this is part of our spring uh, programming for, for exhibits and also asking you to please complete our survey. Uh, Michelle posted the link um, in the chat and I think Nidia also wanted to mention something. Uh. Michelle, I think I think I'm. There you go. Yeah, you're good. Okay, there. I, yeah. Am I? In 
Okay, there I am. There you um, go. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much. That was such a fascinating um, conversation. Thank you, Joanna um, and um, Wilhelmina. Can you can you all hear me? It says I'm muted. No, we, we're yeah. good. Okay. okay, you can good. hear. We can hear you. Um, I think it's such a wonderful way um, to start this series. You know, there were so many uh, themes in your work that I think. Um, resonate so deeply with us. You know, this notion of, of transformation, of renewal. I love that notion of cutting through the bad, you know, and, and sort of seeing the good and forging ahead. And, and those feel um, like such important messages right now for all of us. Um, and it's such, um, it's so important for artists um, and for all of us to continue um, to talk about these ideas and to do what artists do best, which is to try to make sense of the world around them, right? Um, and to try to find inspiration. Um, and I love that you were talking about, you know, it's with what you have, right? Trying to make something from what you have. And whatever that is, whether we're in a tiny apartment, we're sharing it with our siblings and our parents and they're, you know, or we have a, a backyard or we don't, or we're just eating pasta, whatever it is, it's what we have, right? And it's trying to find new ways to make something meaningful out of that. And so those messages to me, um, I think to all of us really um, have value. Um, I wanted to move to something a little bit lighthearted and kind of fun. We're going to try out tonight. Well, Nina, you are our guinea pig tonight. We have sort of a rapid fire series of questions that we're going to ask you um, that you can <laughs> you can sort of quickly answer. I mean, these are not, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll see how this goes. So you'll sort of answer quickly. We've kind of come up with some um, questions and, and you'll sort of, you know, tell us what you think. They're kind of a cue card sort of uh, affair. So here we go, are you ready? Uh, should I be scared? <laughs> no, don't be scared, don't be scared. All right, what is your idea of perfect happiness? Oh, perfect happiness is good health. I like that, okay. Um, what are you doing to fill your days? Growing plants. Love that. Scrapping, okay. scrapping, scrapping. Yes. Renewal. <laughs> I love it. Scrapping. Okay. Um, what historical figure do you most identify with? Fannie Lou Hamer. Okay. How come? Because she was not very educated or as educated as she could have been. She had a different kind of education on her, but she was fierce. She was she was outspoken. She was fearless. She also had breast cancer. She passed away at age 57, though. Um, but uh, she, she's just like my heroine. Yeah. I love that. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, who or what is your favorite artist, artwork, or art movement? You mentioned Betty Saar. Um, I love Betty Saar. She's my hero also. Yeah. Um, all of the ones who do um, art from found objects are, are my favorite. And I study them, I f try to follow them, and um, those, that, that's, my, that's my passion right there. Okay, all right, here we go. What is your favorite place in New York City or in Uptown? I guess I have to say Washington Heights. <laughs> <laughs> But Harlem and Washington Heights, they sort of mesh together. I live in Harlem and my studio is nine blocks north in Washington Heights. So Harlem, Washington Heights. Okay, we can live with that. Okay, here we go. What's on your nightstand? A lamp, a cell phone, and water. Sounds like some essentials there, right? Um, okay. What do you most look forward to doing post quarantine? Being my husband. I'm a newlywed. I'm a newlywed, and my husband. There he is. Hi, honey. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Hi, dear. That's Hi so honey. Cute. 
Uh, we'll have to have a reunion special, right? Yes. Okay. All right. What is your mo motto or words to live by? Mm. Gee, you got me there. <laughs> Come back to that one. <laughs> okay. All right. So here we go. What do you consider your greatest achievement? Um, transforming my life and um, not taking no for an answer when I thought something was wrong medically and I was dismissed and told um, just go home and put a cold compress or warm compress on your chest. There's nothing wrong with you. Uh, so over a period of time, um, having built enough self-esteem to understand that I have the right to be uh, examined by a doctor. And if I say I have a complaint to have it addressed. And so I think just that growth process over a period of time, it didn't happen overnight, but the growing process of being able to uh, advocate for myself, especially medically, um, and be heard and be taken seriously as a woman, as a black person, and as a human being. Well, I think those are words to live by, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, think, I think you, I think you managed to answer both of those um, in one. Um, thank you. That that's truly um, been inspirational and. Um, such a great way, I think, to usher in this series. We're so happy that you were here with us tonight um, to inaugurate this event. Um, we, we really, it, it's been, you know, such a, a treat for all of us to, to be able to enter your studio, um, to hear from you, um, to learn about you, um, and, and really to find inspiration um, in what you do. So we thank you so much for that. Um, before we go, I just, Martin is actually Martin Collins, who is the stroll coordinator and Inwood's very own, um, is here tonight. I think he came in a little bit late, so I think he's going to say a few words before we go. Um, and uh, he will, uh, he can, are you on mic there or unmuted there, Martin? I am indeed. Okay, take it away. Well, Amina, thank you very much for launching our tour this evening. What an absolutely wonderful video and talk with you. We very much thank you very much for doing so this evening. And to Peter Walsh and Coogan's, our very good friends, thank you for 35 years. Thank you, Peter, for all you've done for our community and for always being a strong supporter of the arts and the Uptown Arts Stroll. Thank you, Peter. And this series, uh, which began this evening, will continue next Thursday, May 7th at 7.30 p.m. Details will be posted at artstroll.com. We invite everyone to join us for Christopher Priori's open studio. Christopher Priori is a visual artist in Washington Heights, illustrating themes of culture, romance, and morality through mixed media paintings. And you can all enjoy another version of our open studios next Thursday, May 7th at 7.30 p.m. Details again at artstroll.com and for a snapshot, of Chris's work, please visit his Facebook, Christopher Priori Studio. That's Christopher Priori Studio on Facebook to see uh, Christopher's work and you'll get to meet him again next Thursday, May 7th at 7.30 p.m. right here on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thanks, Martin, so much for that. Um, Wilhelmina, once again, um, it has been our joy to have you here with us tonight. Thank you so much for sharing this time with us tonight. And thanks to all of you um, who joined us as well. Uh, we hope that this will be sort of an ongoing date. Um, 7.30 is on Thursday night. I don't know what else uh, we have going on, but um, uh, we, we look forward to seeing you all um, uh, sort of, you know, as long as we can keep this going and I think it'll be for, for a while. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Um, we appreciate having you and we look forward to seeing you again uh, next week. Same time, same place. Take care. Bye, everybody.